Hey, you want to see my vlog about the MTV VMAs? <sighs> no, of course you don't, since no one watches that fucking shit anymore. But every now and then, you know, you know, someone asks me, like, what'd you think about it? And what do you think about this dead, rotting corpse of a show? So I, I, I did a vlog about it. Uh, no, I did not, actually. I didn't record a vlog. I recorded a podcast that I'm putting up on YouTube anyway. It's at the end of this intro. <sighs> okay, but before we get to that, by the way, I have a podcast. Who knew? Uh, not most of you, because I never advertise anything or market myself in any way. I'm too good for that, which is, you know, why I, I don't make that PewDiePie money. But yeah, I have a podcast. It's called Song vs. Song, where me and my podcast host, Danny Roth, uh, he's from SciFiWire.com, and we take two big songs from pop history, and we argue about which is the better one, and which one has the better story, and the cooler history, and so on. Uh, so if you want to listen to two guys debate, you know, whether every breath you take is better than with or without you, or you want to hear my thoughts about, you know, songs I've never talked about on the main programs on here on YouTube, you know, you can check us out on Spotify or Apple or I guess wherever you listen to podcasts. And every month we do a Patreon exclusive where we also do um, movie reviews of whatever big music movie is, has come out. You know, we did Rocket Man, we did Blind by the Light, we are absolutely doing Cats when that comes out later this year. And, uh, you know, just a dollar a month will get you, you know, let you listen to those. Um, oh, yeah, and uh, I guess I should mention also, while I have your attention, I also have a Patreon for this show. Uh, you know, who knew? I, I barely advertise that also, but it's where literally all my money comes from. You know, I make, I make Jack Diddley squat from YouTube itself because all my shit is copyright claimed. Like 80, 90%. I get like 100 bucks at the end of the month, so... You know, you don't have to contribute to the Patreon. I, I put this shit up on YouTube for, for, for free, gladly. But if you wanted to toss me a dollar, I'd appreciate it. Because, quite frankly, my shit's pretty good. And I've been doing it a long time. And my car needs to be replaced. So, uh, you know, it's seriously on its last legs. So if you wanted to drop me a quarter here or there, I'd appreciate it. Uh, and I'm going to start putting up some, like, exclusive content on that probably next month. That'll be a new tier. So if you're uh, already donating, well, uh, pay attention to that. Okay, now to this year's bizarrely Jersey-themed MTV whatever awards. Hi, I'm Todd Nathanson. And I'm tired. You're, no, who, who are you really? Uh, I forgot. It's been many hours of MTV VMA uh, watching. Uh, my name is Danny Roth. And this is Song vs. Song. This is our uh, bonus episode. We just watched the MTV Video Music Awards, that big event. I, as I'm sure you have you all, just for the last three hours. Yep, everyone's been watching. They watched the pre-show. Uh, like me, I'm sure everybody watched the, uh, uh, the, the Ridiculousness, which is a popular MTV show. They had a special hour-long edition called the uh, VMA Ridiculousness. Oh my God! You didn't it's, tell me about this. It's uh, I don't know if you're familiar with this. It is a show in which they show you uh, you know, YouTube videos and such, and they comment on them. Oh, so it's it's Tosh point oh. Sure. Ugh. Today tonight was the uh, forgotten vestigial appendage that was the Video Music Awards. We we covered the Grammys. We were gonna cover this out of obligation, just like many culture reporters do. Yep. Yeah. You wrote extensive notes. I wrote nothing. I wrote extensive notes in that I wrote down who performed. Okay. That's still one <laughs> step ahead of what I did. I am already wearing my Mets hat and sunglasses. Uh, Yeah, this is... Uh, I'm ready for bed. <laughs> no, this uh, this show has not mattered for quite a bit. Uh, decades now, really. It's something that... Mostly nostalgia powers me through these, uh, through this event, and uh, this was a weird one. Like, in as much as the MTV VMAs can be weird because they're so stage managed now and just like so, uh, very unspontaneous. Yeah, I think that that is a uh, an aspect. I think we'll probably end up talking about a a handful of times, yeah. just because the um, the examples wherein that's not the case are so few and far between. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we watched the the pre-show, and the pre-show is just people who have no talent to speak of 
other than can read on a fourth grade level. Yeah, you know, the 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 stuff comes up on the screen and they read it and they are too afraid to say anything other than what's on the prompter lest they lose their 5 seconds of fame. That's it. And that's honestly the majority of that's all of the pre-show except for Megan Thee Stallion and the very brief appearance of Lizzo and also Taylor Swift who who showed up very briefly on the pre-show red carpet to remind people that anything can happen <laughs> on the VMAs. But as, they'll, as, they'll try as, their best to make sure it doesn't. Yes. I still I just was delighted that they brought Taylor Swift out onto the red carpet because she was going to be the first big performer of the night. And she said, anything can happen on the VMAs. Uh, as, I forget what she said, but she basically said, as, as she learned firsthand. And I thought... I don't know what in the 10 years ago and you still ain't over it you're talking about. You, I, I think, I'm going to let you finish, but... I, I think maybe they fed her that line, like they told her to say it just to remind people that the VMAs was a thing people cared about once upon a time. I just was floored by the fact that that isn't... That's 10 years ago. Yeah. That happened 10... A, de- a decade Taylor Swift has been famous for that long. Oh, she's been famous for longer than that. It's weird to me because she she never, I mean, she feels simultaneously still new in my head and also irrelevant. But yeah, uh, yeah well, but that, like, there was that. And uh, then I said, was there anything that had happened past 2009 at the VMAs that mattered? And you cited one other example. Miley Cyrus. Which is interesting because Miley Cyrus was at this VMAs, did a performance, and... Um, didn't really register even as a blip for me. It was in black and white. Yeah. I thought of the Seinfeld episode where Seinfeld makes out with his girlfriend while he's watching Schindler's List to the point that he doesn't even know that the film was in black and white. And you also had kind of checked out for a second. So I, I, I asked you, what did you think about the black and white? Because I thought for sure you'd say, the black and white! Because yeah. that's how memorable it was. Well, let me say this. I, this is actually a very... For as you know, not as many interesting things happened as it w- did in the MTV heydays. And what I, what I really noticed is like the only people who are here are the people who need something from MTV, and the people who need something from MTV are are very rare these days. And that is why ninety nine percent of the people who won awards were people who were there. Oh no, that's that's always the case. That's always been the case. Uh, You know, now that I know how the machinery of uh, award shows works, it's always going to go to someone who is there. Except for the one time that it didn't happen at this show. Well, yeah, yeah, that's because it has that was the one that actual people voted on as opposed to record executive, you know, TV executives putting the thumb on the scale. Back in the day, no one would miss this event. It was a big, important event that you were dying to get into. And I was just like rattling off all the people I could think of who are, had huge years that were not there. Like, Ed Sheeran is not there. Billie Eilish is not there. Ariana is not there. Uh, Drake is not there. Lady Gaga is not there. Justin Bieber is not there. Travis Scott is not there. Uh, you know, these are, you know, if this was a real event, the people were, these people would be here. Instead, it's people who are on the way down trying to get back up or people who are on the way up who are trying to make that big jump into the big time. Like Lizzo and like uh, Lil Nas X. Yeah, Lizzo, my winner of the night. Yeah. Um, not, not, I mean, not that there was a lot of competition out there. Well, you know, and there is one specific thing that is peculiar to this particular award show. Uh, it's, it was like based entirely around New Jersey. It was a New Jersey themed event. Well, so it used to be a New York event, and then it moved out to the West Coast, right? Uh, and they brought it back to the East Coast this year. Uh, but I guess you know New York. It's been done. It's also fucking expensive. Yes. So they said, "How do we do the East Coast for cheap, but not Philly?" Uh, yeah. And the answer was Newark. No, yeah, we 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 finally figured out. What the M and MTV stands for now, it is Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's you'd think I would be excited about this. Yeah, you are the Jersey person in the like. No, I'll, I'll tell you what it is because I have a friend who works at MTV and he showed me their new, you know, lineup. 
and it is entirely Jersey Shore based. It is entirely based about around them reviving Jersey Shore, which was the last time anyone cared about an MTV property. The last time MTV, and what was that, like 2006, 2008? Like, well, they're, what, they're back now. Well, yeah, yeah, they're back, and they're back in Jersey. It's weird that they didn't have any actual Jersey Shore people there. That is unusual. Uh, but they did uh, have the Jonas Brothers, who you and I both, yeah. so out of touch are we. <laughs> no, I had no idea they were... That they were Jersey people. No, I thought they were... I honestly, for a long time, thought they were like Mormons from Utah, I like just the killers. Ass- I like- just assumed that they were from an alien planet. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, I had no idea they were from New Jersey, but they had yeah. a whole shtick where they performed at the Stone Pony, which is where Springsteen is known for having uh, performed. And it uh, puts you close to the Jersey Shore, which, you know, it's the very end of the summer. So that was nice. I mean, the Jonas Brothers are fine. I mean, I have no attachment to them, but they're fine. Yeah, and they had that like a, a shtick beforehand where they talked about all the great Jersey acts like Whitney Houston and Springsteen and Bon the, Jovi and the Jersey Boys themselves. Probably the only time Frankie Valley has ever been mentioned at the at, on, on MTV. Like it was like the one hook they had, and in fact, I can only assume that's how they wound up with that host. Oh, what did you write down his name? No, it's a scribble on my head. It's Sebastian Man, Man, yeah. Man Cuso, Man, do, do Man you, Cow. Do Man, you want a Man Bear Peg? Yeah. Do you do you want him to explain the thing that he did that sort of summed him up the whole night? He's like in his mid forties, and he started out, and he did a joke like it was his first joke. It's like we're not gonna have a safe space. In case any of y'all are triggered, and we're not giving out any participation trophies. Oh, yes, like, i I believe I believe I was the one to to draw the dice clay yeah, reference. Yeah, that was you comparison. Um, but yeah, I did not uh, I did not care for him. What was it? I I had another boy that. Your attempt at doing a Jersey accent. Was, I know. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. Shame on you. <laughs> My my wife has a term that she uses to describe a uh, gentleman of his persuasion, and uh, I know she didn't originate it, but um, I do associate it with her because she's the first person I heard say it. Um, and I like the way that she explains it. She goes, oh, that's a yo fuck. Yeah. And you go, a yo fuck? And then she says, yo, fuck. <laughs> yeah. Which he certainly was. Uh, he also made a joke because um, in, in, with regard to the fact that this place was – with the awards were in Jersey, they kept pointing it out, which is surprising. Yeah. You wouldn't think that they would keep saying, yo, Jersey. Yeah. I talk about it all the time on this podcast, but I wouldn't say that I, you know, in my day, my day to day, make a big thing about Jersey. But, uh, yeah, they did it a bunch to the point that they had the actor, uh, from the Sopranos. Yeah. They brought out three of the Sopranos. That's how, that's how fucking weird it was. Who you know? And the, I, I, and the, I still and the love host, the Sopranos, but like, who who needed them back in our lives? Like, the, the host said that he his parents were disappointed in him for never having appeared in the show, mm-hmm. and I said that the problem was that he can't say the name right because if you're gonna be in that show, you can't say Sopranos. Yeah, it's Sopranos. 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 No, no, stop. I'm, it. I, I, I'm trying. Just the the point is that he's somehow, despite um, the raw Jersey Guido energy he was bringing, he still wasn't <laughs> he wasn't Sicilian enough. Just wasn't. Just wasn't there. The joke he made about the Sopranos was a uh, Sopranos. Excuse me. Was the the only good joke he told all night? Yeah, it was rough. Uh, everything was pretty much of the caliber of um, safe spaces and trigger warnings. And oh man, when uh. I'm old. Did anybody know? Oh, if I got plastic surgery, I could look like the Jonas Brothers. Oh, we we. And also, if I had another family, yuck, yuck. It was it was so tired. It was more tired than we sound tired right now. We sound awful right now. Yes, hard to believe, but true. It was. I I can't recommend not watching the VMAs enough. No, like after uh, Shawn Mendes and Camila Cabello performed, she was like, he was like, look at that. The hair, the ass, the lips. Oh, and that Camilla's great too. It was like, 
it was like we were sitting there in front of a train we could see coming a mile away and we were like tied to the tracks like you, we knew it was coming and we couldn't do anything about it yeah no it was it was worse than that i'd said it, it was it was like that scene from austin powers <laughs> where the where the roller's coming really yeah, slowly the and the guy's like ah no <laughs> yes it was like that it in, was in really that we bad we could have moved the entire time we could have turned off the television and done something better with our lives yeah i could have lived a whole lifetime it's like that uh, episode of uh, star trek the next generation where picard lives a whole life <laughs> yeah. In 25 minutes, I could have, I could have gone down in my mind to a, a an alien planet from the past and tried to save it from uh, a drought <laughs> and 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 lived a whole life down there and have been obliterated by the sun, but you know had multiple kids and learned how to play the flute and such. By the, by the time that punchline Yeah. <laughs> it was land. it was uh it was not good. So he was the loser of the night. Oh, I, I can't think of anything that was worse than that. But right. all right, so let's say if someone was going to try and watch something from it, what would you say this was worth seeing? I, I guess Lizzo, I, you know, she was fine. She was, you know, she was Lizzo. So like just by being Lizzo, she was good. She was great. Sometimes, yeah. I, sometimes I'll forget. And Megan, Megan the Stallion, um, did a yeah. performance as a pre-show Megan thing. The Stallion. The Stallion. I'm aware. I'm aware. Yeah. yeah. Sopranos. <laughs> um, the point is uh, that she also was good. And I thought that, that um, Missy's performance for getting the Video Vanguard Award came out and, and did a medley of all for her, you know, her best bits. Yeah. That was enjoyable. Was that her wearing the, the inflatable bag? I think it was her. I do think it was her. Yeah, I couldn't tell because I was like, if that was an impersonator, I couldn't, t- I wouldn't be able to tell because she got like all that stuff covering her face and the. I believe that it was her. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that was that was fine. Um, and uh, I for for the joke that I made, I think you can just listen to the that new Miley Cyrus song, but it was fine. Like they put her in black and white. Like actually, all of a sudden, you know, the I camera actually, was in black and white, and she I, sang the song. I hadn't heard that song before. It's actually very good. I I like that a lot, and uh, so I I was paying attention. Yeah, Even she broke up. She broke up with while with you were with making that, Seinfeld with, jokes with right. Hemsworth, you know. Yeah. And she's and she's sad about it. It's hard. It's a hard thing to do. Uh, I, I one assumes. Yeah, but and, uh, uh, yeah, it was good. I thought that was a good performance. I just you know, it just can't compare with uh, grinding up against Beetlejuice. No, that'll that'll be her uh, image forever. I wonder if she's tired of that the way she was tired of Miley of Hannah Montana in 2013. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's been long enough, yeah. Yeah, Taylor Swift. What are your thoughts about that? She opened the show. She was like the biggest name they got. She, you know, the- she, they kept cutting to her throughout every single performance. They kept cutting to see, like, what does Taylor think of this one? You want to see her dance to uh, Missy Elliott? Well, they're gonna hold on it for a good, you know, ten, fifteen seconds. Yep, exactly long enough for you to know that she doesn't know the lyrics to any Missy Elliott songs. Uh, yeah. So Taylor Swift. Let's say this. Coming into the show, as anyone who follows me on Twitter is aware, but maybe you don't, and there's certainly nothing wrong with that. I'm not really feeling a lot of positive vibes to- towards uh, Taylor <laughs> Swift lately. She dropped a new album recently. Mm-hmm. I think that there are a couple of decent songs off of it. I think it is, on the whole, a very safe album. Mm-hmm. And um, the singles that she's putting out there, the the two that you've already heard that they've made music videos for, and then the the title song. The new one, that there's a video for that also. Yeah, that one is also very tame. And uh and there's another song that I believe is uh gonna is like sort of a single, but not really, The Archer, mm-hmm. which seems for some reason to be that uh, uh Taylor Swift decided it was time to um give uh Katniss Everdeen a theme song. I don't know. <laughs> Do, well, you, know, do, do, do. you know, the performance was weird because she did You Need to Calm Down, mm-hmm. which was the, the the performance, you know, the the one she she's won a couple awards for that. Yes. And she won two tonight for it. Yeah. And then she did Lover, which is an entirely different vibe song. Yeah. It's kind of her, you know, like country pop. She had like all the stuff she had in the video behind her, you know, all her uh, her entourage, I guess. I, I, I want to say drag race performers. I, maybe some. Here's what I'll say. It was very strange to me. I mean, if you were in the audience, you wouldn't have seen it. But seeing it on the television, 
they kept having um, big orange puffy letters of the yeah. lyrics pop, pop up, up on the screen yeah for you need to calm down and they were nickelodeon letters that was <laughs> that was a nickelodeon font that was very strange yeah and then she did that you need to calm down and then she did lover and literally the lights go off cuz it's a you know somber song so the the lights go off behind her and there's just like all that gay shit just gets pushed to the side like you're like no we're not doing this anymore it was like weird optics it was very strange yeah. uh, i'm just glad that she didn't play my most hated song on that album the man we'll put a pin in that one okay yeah. <laughs> all right she was the only one who won two awards that night yeah i guess that's so uh and i think that that was uh i mean you said before that there's you know um the executives putting fingers on scales I think yeah. that that was quite pointedly done. I think that Taylor Swift said, I will be winning two awards tonight. <laughs> yes. The first one, I will let the gays speak. And which, then, were, and which, then, is, which is good optics. Which is yeah. good optics, but she wanted to also have a turn. Yeah. So she said, I will win a second time, and then I will get up and say some words. Yeah. That, and I believe that there was absolutely, if there wasn't a conversation with her directly, there was a conversation with her people about it going yeah. down exactly that way. She's a very, I mean, you know, you and I and have she, different opinions about Taylor Swift. I find her to be extremely calculating. Um, this all seemed extremely calculating. Certainly this night, she let uh, her her director speak, who is, I'm, I'm pretty sure is gay, Taja Call. Then the night she, the second time she won, she got up there and she soapboxed about... Uh, equal rights. Equal, the Equality Act or some, yep. something, yeah. And Said something about the White House. yeah. And she has made this extremely part of her brand. And it, it feels weird that, like, the first thing she won was, like, best song with a message. And Yeah, it's very strange to watch a woman who has spent over a decade being completely apolitical. Like, like the most famously apolitical person on Earth. And now all of a sudden she's decided that this is going to be her pet issue. And, you know, I'm never going to side with Donald Trump on anything, but... Yeah. Uh, Gosh, she's so irritating in some ways that she she's 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 testing me. It it's, won't happen. It feel, it, but. It, 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 you know, you don't want to shit on someone for doing the right thing, even if they're doing it the wrong way. But like something just doesn't feel right about it. I uh, what I'd said at the time was I wanted to start my own campaign, my own petition, uh, which was the Equal Rights Act, where everybody has more equal <laughs> rights than Taylor Swift and see if I could get more signatures for it. I am not that down. <laughs> but she's, like, she's just a, I don't know, man. You, mean, you, you, I, you said put say a pin it, on the man. I really hate yeah. that song for many reasons. She just really rubs me the wrong way. I, you know, I will say it is weird that she wins an award for saying something on the first thing she said, she said in a, her 13 year career. I mean, whatever. I mean, like, and to be fair, there, it's not like she had much competition. There was like a bunch of songs, like a John Legend song no one's ever heard of and little Dickie's earth that yep. she was competing against. Well, so please, like, please, it's not please like watch can... Todd, the Todd in the Shadows video yeah. about little Dickie's Earth. So l let's say like I can't think of someone she robbed in that regard. That That's fair. And look, Taylor, I know that you're a big listener to the podcast. Um, and if it bothers you that I'm frustrated with some of the things that you've said and done lately and the way that you've done them, yeah. um, just do as you always do. Shake it off. <laughs> you know, things don't bother her. She's so thick-skinned. That's it. Um, Tell me that I need to calm down, or um, you can forget that I existed. Yeah. All right. Et cetera. Uh, a couple other things I wanted to hit that, that happened that night. So, uh, Sean Mendez performed twice. Mm -hmm. Once solo, once with Camila Cabello. And uh, there are rumors that uh, Sean and Camila are a thing. Yes, and then I, there were uh, also rumors that she is his beard. I am not one to speculate about someone's sexuality, but if they are a couple, they, you know, it did not come across in the they seem very friendly. They do. She did the she did the thing. So they did a, the performance together and at the end they did almost like an Eskimo kiss type of thing. Yeah. Like like noses touch, a big hug. That big is, smile. That is the kind of physical affection that you have with somebody that you are never having sex with. It was like we nailed it kind of looked 
And it shows like, yeah, we're a yeah, I like 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 you would do in a, a school play. I saw yeah. them in the crowd later, and he had his arm around her and was like kind of touching her waist and such. Mm-hmm. And uh, here is what I will say: I don't want to assume, as you said, anything about anybody's sexuality, but I do think that the concept of them being a couple is marketing. It doesn't yeah. mean anything about either their sexuality, but. M- marketing yes that i think it is no like and they may well be a couple but it has like kind of the ring of an arranged marriage around it it does and that's a thing in pop music i mean it's yeah. it's it's more so i think in other countries than it is in america but it does happen here so you know yeah i mean again it doesn't necessarily mean anything about anybody's sexuality so i don't i don't want to put it out there I'm not trying to say that. No, John no. Mendes and like he has said, like, I don't believe that they're dating. That's all. Yeah. He said, he has said he feels pressure to, you know, act straighter or, or in public now because of all those rumors. And it's like gets on him. And I was like, Ugh, that, that must suck. I, I wouldn't want to be that guy. That's, so, yeah, that's shitty. I don't want to add to yeah. that at all. Uh, anyway, the performances were okay. Again, Fine. just like really they're, they're just, they're just really canned. I don't know, like a bunch of people performed and they performed like they performed. Like, and there wasn't really anything like uh, Big Sean came out. He did a song. Was like, this is there, you know, Bad Bunny and uh, uh, Balvin came out and they they did a song. Yep, they were just there. like cartoons. Yep. Yeah. And uh, Rosa, Rosalia, uh, yeah, who's I've never was, heard of. They're, they're really uh, somebody paid a bunch up. of money. Yeah. Yeah. Like they're she won Best Latin Award. And I remember like a, a couple of years ago, there was a like a big thing about them not giving out a, a, a Latin a Latin award because like that was the Despacito year and didn't get nominated for anything. And there was like a big stink about that as if the MTV movie awards or video awards matter as a concept at all anymore. Like who gives a crap? But like, I guess that was their, uh, you know, okay, we're uh, diverse now. And, you know, I don't keep my ear super to the ground on this, but I did not, I had not heard Rosalia ever before. And I have, I had heard of everyone else that was nominated. I've heard of, you know, bad bunny and Jay Belvin and all uh, Selena Gomez and Snow. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> you know, Latin superstar Snow. I have a question for you. Yeah. Do you think that if uh, if we did uh, a song versus song award show, <laughs> and I'm saying bare bones, like we did it out of my apartment, you know, and there wasn't really anything special about the trophy that you, but there is a trophy. We got to get some cheap trophies. We order a couple of pizzas. We put Cardi B up for an award. <laughs> Does she show up to my apartment? Yes or no? <laughs> Cardi B is a delight, and I think we could. I think we could get her. I don't. Like, I don't think there's an award show in the land she won't show up to. I like, think that she just really likes to be nominated. I think that she's just happy to be there. She's just. I don't know that she uh, knows particularly where she is at any yeah. given time. <laughs> However. She's definitely happy wherever she shows up. She is such an oddball. I can't tell what planet she's from. It's not Earth. Yeah. But she's she's a delight. I just, you know, it's it's funny because you watch her and it's like, she's a delight. Lizzo is a delight. But Lizzo is from our planet. Yeah. She is very much aware of her surroundings. She's just sharp as a tack. And Cardi B is, it's just so funny. She's such a, she's such a funny little space cadet. And I don't think that she's, dumb she's actually very smart she really knows how to talk about politics but when she gets up on stage she has this i don't know if it's a persona or what yeah but it's funny well she she presented something right she did well she she presented uh the video vanguard award like she was up there no she won something first and she gave like a crazy uh, speech and then she also had to present for missy and uh she was like reading off the cue cards and she was not even remotely trying to sound natural while she was doing it. And then like everyone, well, no, she, no, she's, she came out, she talked like herself mm-hmm. and then she said, okay, here I go. And then yeah. started to read off of the prompter. Yeah. And I thought this woman could be president of the United States. <laughs> we've, we've, we've set a precedent and you know what? Yeah. It's a step up. Uh, and I, my favorite part of that whole thing was that um, after Missy performed, yeah. She thanked a bunch of people on the last person she thanked was Cardi and Cardi got confused <laughs> and was like, what? And Missy was like, no, I'm just thanking you, girl. <laughs> like, <laughs> and Cardi was like, okay. You know, it was very funny. Of her? Yes. 
Yes, yes. And uh, it was it was the I'm not gonna do the thing. No, but yes, no, she did no, do I that. Do it. Like, I want one other one I wanted to hit. Um, so what do you what do you think about uh Nas X there, Lil Nas X? I don't know why he did that other song. That song is just not. A, I don't think it's connecting with people. It, it's been around for a time. I I am yeah. I'm I speaking of space cadets. You know I am not entirely familiar with his oeuvre. Uh, beyond the one song, I just didn't, and it's billion remixes. Yeah, yeah, I just haven't really. I didn't connect to the thing. I thought he was funny when he got his one award. Yeah, because he went up and I, I thought, oh great, an actual gay person can get up and accept an award. That's nice. Get off the stage, Taylor. Uh, and and he did a, a shtick where he was like, I got a speech, yeah. and he had like a whole big long scroll. <laughs> yeah, and then he just walked away. I don't. I don't think he knew how and, to. Yeah. He, it was like an SNL sketch that didn't know how to end itself, <laughs> yeah. but it was funny in the moment. And they cut to Lizzo, and Lizzo was rolling, so that was good. I was like, yeah. okay, it's okay. Well, I mean, it's he, all right to laugh at this one. He he started off his 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 performance with uh, uh, you know, a, a joke like a video joke of like it being like twenty twenty one thirty one whatever. It was, like, yeah, it was thirty one something. And he had like he's releasing his three thousandth remix of Old Town Road. And he was president or something. Yeah. God help us. Like God, I hope. Like yes, yes, indeed. <laughs> please make this happen. But yeah, President Lil Nas X once again. A step yeah, up. We'll, we'll, we'll like he's you know he is a joke in that, and then he did, performs his other song. I mean, we'll see what happens with the Lil Nas X, but it's got that song has I'm a bit of a one hit wonder connoisseur, and that one has failed a like failed attempt to make a second hit written all over it. Like yeah. So I mean, he's like that was like his big statement. He's like, no, I'm not a one hit wonder. Well, we'll see, we'll see. I guess that's all the uh, the main things that happened, except for that. Uh, like I said, the one last weirdness from that weird night. They brought out every Jersey rapper they could find. Yeah, anyone who was willing to turn up. Yeah, like I don't think um, I can't think of any other Jersey rappers. And they made it like a point, it's like. Ice T came out, who was from Jersey, even though he's like was like he's raised a West Coast in, guy, raised, but he was, he was born in Newark, and he's like he did it like two bars, then he like it's like introduce people naughty by nature. No, 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 no. I, I want to say this. He's like hip hop was born in the Bronx, but it was raised in Jersey. Was it? No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Okay, well they brought out every Jersey rapper they could find. They uh, and like most of these people have been in mothballs since forever. Like Queen Latifah, who hasn't rapped it since like 1992, shows up to do Unity, and uh, Naughty by Nature comes out to do you know OPP and Hip Hop Hooray. Yep. And Fetty Wap, who I I was wondering what happened to him. Like he was big in 2015, and then he dropped off the face of the earth. And I had heard like he couldn't handle the pressure. But they they dragged him out of nowhere to to do Trap Queen. Yep, Redman was there. Yeah, and why Clef Jean? That was the weirdest one for me. And like, why Clef Jean has not faded from the book? Like, he pops up all the time, but like, he didn't rap. No, <laughs> he did his his folk songs. He did Gone Like November, and he did his cover of No Woman No Cry. And like, it was just very confusing and like off the vibe of everything else that was happening that night. Yes, he came on stage, and I said, Yeah. One of these kids is not like the others. <laughs> I hope whatever they paid him makes its way to Haiti. Mm-hmm. And that's how we ended. We ended on a bunch of has-been rappers with like no one else there. Oh, you know, it was also weird because they gave the the, the 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 awards out of order. Oh yeah, that's right. They, like they they, they saved uh, best new artist towards the very very end, and and uh, Square in the middle of the show was the best video and best song. I didn't even I I watched this last year and like I haven't kept up with this but I did watch it last year. I'm pretty sure best song and best video were not separate awards. Like why would you make them separate? Like I really believe that they did that because they I think that probably last year's award show mm-hmm. they noticed that everybody cut out after the first hour. That they saw yeah. a huge dip in audience share, so mm-hmm. they figured, well, if people are going to cut out anyway, we better make sure that we get these ones done. That's my guess. Yeah. Well, you know, the after that, they did Best Pop, so, like, to give them to the Jonas best Brothers. Best Pop. Yeah, not Best Pop Song or Best Pop just, Video, just, just Best pop, pop. Pop. And Best Pop. Yeah, the how, Best I Pop of the Year. Are any of those to, guys' dads? They're, they're pops <laughs> in them? Oh, and, so, and uh, Sophie Turner was there. Yes. 
you know, she was real happy to see the Sopranos. Oh yeah, yeah. she was. Yeah, she was like. You know, just like uh, when one person from New Jersey sees another person from New Jersey, <laughs> they go, Jersey represent. Yeah. Uh, instead, she was like, home box office represent. HBO, you know, Prestige, T- Prestige TV, you got to give it up for each other. Yeah. But yeah, Jonas Brothers got it for best pop. Maybe they had to do that towards the end so he, they could get back from the Stone Pony in time. Like, yeah, and, yeah. And then weird. They, and then they finish on best new artist, which was like the only thing that the the actual viewers vote on and went to Billie Eilish who was not there instead of Lizzo you know the the Billy fans they are out in force I guess so but I don't know man give it to I mean look it doesn't I wanted Lizzo to be able to get up on stage and accept an award I really um I said this uh while we were watching and I think I tweeted about it too but it's weird to think that when we started doing um bonus episodes for Patreon that the first thing we did was ugly dolls (laughs) <laughs> this nothing movie and yeah. in addition to charlie xcx and bb rexa for some reason lizzo is also in that movie and i am going to tell you this if if by the end of 2020 she isn't on top of the fucking world yeah i will be really blown away because she's just a a, a genuine talent in a way that i think very few people are, you know, there's that thing that we value as a society, authenticity. And she has it in a way that I don't think a single other person in that whole building has. Not even Halsey, not even BB Rexa. A lot of Halsey and BB Rexa reaction shots too. Those two and Taylor. We saw a lot of them. That's true. Oh, do you want to talk about Halsey some more? Do you have anything else you want to say about Halsey? No, I do not. Okay. (laughs) She's just checking in. You know, any any personal messages for her? Not really. Okay. (laughs) Just 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 checking. I guess it's fine that she didn't I mean, I would have rather she won, but regardless, she is uh not going anywhere. Yeah. Her fame is only going to increase she's just she is on a meteoric rise, and I don't really see that stopping anytime soon. So that was like the weird, random slapdash, yet entirely too predictable MTV Awards. Put MTV out of its misery. Why Why are we doing this still? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Listen, they can't even kill off VH1. Yeah. So no, this is, if, if VH1 ain't going anywhere, then I got bad news. MTV is here to stay. Yeah, this is a, you know, this is a marriage that's continuing entirely out of stasis, you know. We are, uh, you know, we, we're not doing anything else, so we're just going to keep doing this. Someday, maybe something interesting will happen on that show again, but wasn't tonight. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this bonus episode <laughs> of Song vs. Song. Uh, we will be back next month, yes. uh, where we will be talking about uh, Alanis Morissette and Fiona Apple. If you like the podcast, uh, and we hope you do, uh, please think about going to Patreon and supporting us. Uh, we do one patron exclusive episode per month. Only costs you a dollar if you want to check it out. Uh, and uh, last month we did Blinded by the Light. Next month we're going to be doing uh, the Judy Garland biopic. Uh, so those episodes are very unpredictable, but always interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If you are already uh, supporting the page, if you're already supporting the podcast, thank you very much. Uh, and if you're not, it only costs a dollar. Uh, please uh, go on iTunes and uh, give us a review. Subscribe to the podcast. That also helps a great deal. That's it, kids. Thanks for listening. We're going we, to bed. Do we sound tired? Yeah. Oh, my God. So long. Bye. Yeah. Hey. Uh, yeah, thanks for listening to that. I'm uh, I'm going to play Limelight by Rush. <laughs>